Hey there. How's it going? I hope you're doing well. Uh, I was, I received a comment on, I think it was the last video, um, one of the previous videos I've made, requesting me to do a video talking about my favorite movies, and I thought that would be a good idea, because I've done a video talking about my favorite games, and while that video was not the best video ever, simply because um, I feel like there were a lot of games that I forgot about or left out, or things that I really liked, um, it was still a fun video to make. Um, and so this is going to be kind of that, just for movies instead of games. So, um, yeah, let's talk about my favorite movies. And maybe some of them will be the ones that you like. And maybe some of them will be the ones you don't like. That's just how it goes. But this is just going to be a ramble. Uh, you already know how it goes on this channel uh, if you've been here before. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, there's a chance this is the first time you've ever seen any of my videos. Um, this is what we do a lot. <laughs> Anyway, let's get started. It is really hot in here, by the way. Um, it's like late January, and it's it's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> it's a crazy world we live in. Anyway, um, favorite movies. All right, so right off the bat, one that comes to mind, which I think might be like my pick for like the best movie ever made. It's not necessarily my favorite movie of all time, but I just... I feel like it is like the pinnacle of like cinematography, if you will. I don't know. At least in my opinion. I'm not like a huge movie snob or anything. And I honestly haven't seen a lot of movies, especially ones that people claim are like really good. Um, but my, my top pick for like best movie ever made is Shawshank Redemption. Uh, it's a really good movie. If you haven't seen it highly recommend it and I mean while I said it isn't potentially my favorite movie of all time it is still like exceptional I just I love that movie a lot <laughs> easily one of my favorites um, another one that comes to mind right off the bat and for a while I did consider this one to be my favorite movie of all time uh, I don't know if I would still consider it that because as I've gotten older you know my tastes have changed a bit but when I saw this for the first time a few years ago, it was my favorite movie, and that is Live, Die, Repeat with Tom Cruise. It's kind of like an action movie take on the classic Groundhog Day movie, which I don't know if that's an original idea. Like, if Groundhog Day was the first time, like, repeating the same day style of storytelling, I don't know if that's, like, the first time that was ever done, but it's the first that I know of, so that's why I'm saying that it's a take on that. But potentially there's something that precedes those, like a book or something, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Live, Die, Repeat with Tom Cruise, it's really good. It's It's got some humor, it's got action, it's got everything. <laughs> um, while I'm not a big fan of Tom Cruise as a person, he is a pretty good actor, so um, yeah, that's a good movie. Let's see, what else, what else, what else? Um, Again, kind of with the uh, the video game video that I made, I didn't have a list pre-prepared, so I'm just kind of going off the top of my head. These are like my best picks of all time. Uh, I was just with my family yesterday, and we were talking about Christmas movies. I forget how we got on the subject, but we were talking about all the Christmas movies that we like. Um, a lot of my family members were saying that National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, I think is what it's called, it's Christmas Vacation or whatever, it's the one with Chevy Chase. Um, they were saying that that was their favorite Christmas movie of all time. I do also like that one a good bit. I wouldn't say it's my favorite Christmas movie, though, uh, but it is quite good. So I guess, you know, depending on the criteria, I've, I'm just kind of saying all movies in general. Um, while I do like Christmas movies, there's a part of me that doesn't like just watching the same thing year after year after year after year. Um, and so, I don't know. I get that it's like, oh, it's a tradition. We watch these Christmas movies every year. It's just like, I just don't, I don't love that. I don't love that. Um, the movie that I said was my favorite when it comes to Christmas movies is the movie Klaus, which is on Netflix. It's like an animated movie. Um, it's pretty new, honestly, so it doesn't have that, like, classic vibe that a lot of Christmas movies do, because, again, a lot of them are classic and have been around for a long time, and so people just, it's a tradition to watch those movies. Klaus is not really that, 
but it is still really good in my opinion. I really like that movie. It's got a good, like, heartwarming message, and yeah, it's just it's also cool how they animated it. It's two D, but it looks like kind of three D. Um, there's a whole like behind the scenes video on YouTube, I'm pretty sure, about how they did that movie. It's pretty interesting. I recommend watching that if you've watched the movie. Um, if you haven't watched the movie, you should watch the movie because it's really good. And it's still kind of Christmassy season, I guess, technically. Although when it's 80 degrees in January, <laughs> all right, it's definitely not 80 degrees outside, but it, it feels like it's 80 degrees in here. When you open up the window and the light comes in, but you're still insulated from like the outside air, it gets hot in here. <laughs> um, anyway. So yeah, I would say Klaus is my favorite Christmas movie. Um, let's see. I, I When I was younger, and I mean, I still like them to this day, but when I was younger, especially, I was big into like Star Wars and Spider-Man, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies specifically. Um, the whole trilogy there, I remember liking that a lot as a kid, especially the third one, which is funny because you hear a lot of people shit on the third one like as you get older um critics and all that but as a kid i was really into the third one specifically because i really liked that trope of the good guy becoming a bad guy like temporarily um there were a lot of like i guess i never really thought of it but <laughs> i guess star wars was kind of like that as a kid because like anakin starts off as this good guy and then he becomes darth vader um spoiler alert <laughs> if you haven't seen that by now <laughs> Uh, it's, I don't feel bad about that one. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of like, well, honestly, not a ton of it, but there are a decent number of examples of like movies and TV shows where this like good character slips into like the dark side, you know, at least for a moment. A lot of times, you know, it's like they slip to the dark side and then they come back to being a good person. Um, I like it either way, but yeah, that's kind of why I like the third one a lot, because he becomes, like, slightly evil. Although, upon re-watching the third Spider-Man as, like, an adult, I feel like he didn't ever really do much as evil Spider-Man that was actually that evil. Like, if anything, he just kind of, like, stands up for himself. Like, yeah, he's a little bossy, I guess, and, like, he's more confrontational, but, like, he does things that, like... A person should do technically for instance i mean i'm going to be spoiling spider-man 3 a little bit here but this is kind of an inconsequential plot line but he's vying for this staff job at the daily bugle with against eddie brock who's also vying for the same job and eddie brock cheats to get the job by faking and like photoshopping an image that they'll use for like the front page of the newspaper um, and as an act of evil Spider-Man, because he's influenced by the symbiote or whatever, <laughs> he, like, shows them that he cheated and that, like, the image is fake and that they need to print a retraction and everything. Um, and it's like, is that even that evil? Because, like, he just cheated his way to the top. Like, I, he's just standing up for himself. I don't know. And there's a lot of other things like that where it's like, oh, he's doing bad things, but it's like... They're kind of just normal things, like, I don't know. <laughs> but either way, I did like that as a kid, and I still like those today. Um, I would say the second Spider-Man out of that trilogy is probably my favorite. Um, but the first one's pretty good, too. I don't know. I, I guess I'm more of a personal fan of the second movie in, like, a lineage of superhero movies because the first movie is always dedicated to, like, the superhero learning their superpowers and becoming, like, this bastion of righteousness, you know? <laughs> but then the second movie can actually be unique because it's not, you know, dedicated to that thing that every single superhero movie is dedicated to in the first movie. Um, so typically I'd say I like the second of most superhero movies more than the first one, just because they tend to be more unique, um, and I like that. But yeah, like I mentioned, I like Star Wars. As a kid growing up in the early 2000s, watching the prequels was like the most mind-blowing thing of all time. <laughs> um, yeah, that's where I got pretty heavily into sci-fi, although like 
Star Wars isn't even really that sci-fi, to be honest. Um, it's more like fantasy, technically. Um, but, you know, to a kid that doesn't really understand the plot and everything, and it all looks sci-fi to me. <laughs> all right, so what else, what else, what else? Um, oh, Hacksaw Ridge with uh, Andrew Garfield. The story about Desmond Doss in World War II, the conscientious objector that entered the service and refused to carry a rifle. Um, an incredible movie. An incredible movie. One of the best movies of all time, in my opinion. I mean, it's it made me cry. Like, I was sobbing at a point watching it the first time. Uh, and I still tear up a little bit when I watch it. You know, re-watch it. Um, it's a really good movie. I highly recommend that one, especially if you're into, like, World War II. I'm not a huge, like, World War II history buff or anything, um, but I can appreciate it, and there is an element to, like, the time period of World War II and, like, you know, that all of that that I can, I can appreciate, and so, yeah. So if you're into that, then it's even better, but that is a great movie. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else? Um, the Nice Guys with uh, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe. That is a really good movie. That's a good like comedy. If you just want to laugh, that's that's a really funny movie. I like that one a lot. Uh, I like Ryan Gosling a lot. I'd say he's probably my favorite actor out of all the actors that I like know of. I don't know. There's a lot of people in Hollywood, and I don't know all of them, so. <laughs> But, like, Ryan Gosling is an actor. I feel like I can watch basically any movie he's in, and I'll probably enjoy it. Um, although there's a massive number of movies that he's been in that I still haven't watched to this day. Um, but, yeah, I like a lot of the movies that he's in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I guess also my mind goes to, like, Blade Runner 2049 and also the, the original Blade Runner. Um Honestly, those two aren't what like some of my favorites of all time or anything, but they are good movies. Uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine in particular has some like stunning imagery. Um, just like, just if you pause the movie at certain points, it's just like breathtaking. It's like a painting, you know. Um, so that's cool. The first one also has a good bit of that as well. Um, but yeah, the artistry in 2049 was, they clearly, you know, had <laughs> that in mind. Um, but yeah, let's see what else, what else? Um, I don't know, I don't know. It's hard to think of things right off the top of your head. There's like a, m a bunch of movies that I bet you all think of, like after I'm done recording this video, but... Um, I'm like trying to think of movies that I've seen recently. I don't watch a ton of movies in all honesty. Um, I would say of like my hobbies, if that even counts as a hobby, just like a pastime, you know, the, like a form of entertainment. Uh, I watch YouTube and play video games far more than I watch movies. Um, but yeah, I guess when it comes to like animated movies like Pixar. I'm a huge fan of The Incredibles, uh, specifically the score in that movie. The music is incredible. I love the music in that movie. Um, the art style is also pretty cool. It has that like mid-century, you know, vibe to all like the architecture and stuff. And it has a very like almost comic book feel, which I mean, makes sense considering it's a superhero movie. The tag is up on my shirt, I think. Um, uh, so I really like The Incredibles. Um, what else? What else? I feel like there's, I mean, like, Wally, -E, any of, like, the Pixar catalog, Toy Story. Honestly, Toy Story, I can appreciate that they're good movies, but they've never been some of my favorites, in all honesty. Um... 
out of like the Pixar's catalog, you know, I would actually put Toy Story kind of lower. Uh, just personal preference. I know a lot of people really love those movies, especially if you grew up in like the 90s. Those were pretty popular to like 90s kids. Because um, that was like some of the first like 3D animated movies of all time, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Toy Story 1 was like one of the first like feature length 3D animations. That's probably not fully true, but certainly one of the bigger ones that ever came out at that time. Um, but yeah, Wally's -E good. I feel like there's a Pixar movie that I'm forgetting about that just made me like break down. But I can't think of what it was. I remember being really excited for Soul because I thought that that was going to just crush me. Um, because, you know, watching the trailers, it seemed like they were, you know, it, that the movie was going to heavily hinge upon the idea of, like, your purpose in life and everything. And that's something that I've personally kind of struggled with. Um, so I thought, like, oh, it's going to be really, you know, hard-hitting to me specifically. But honestly, I watched that one, and it just didn't really do it for me. I was not really that into it. Um, there were moments where it was, like, it was close to, like, being kind of hard-hitting, but then it just, like, something happened, or they said something, or the lines were weird, or, you know, whatever, and it just never really hit home fully. Um, but, yeah, that was a little disappointing. I watched Elemental recently, which I think is also Pixar. Um, and I actually... You know, while it was pretty cliche, <laughs> I think everyone kind of understood what it was going to be before it even came out. Um, Pixar does kind of fall into repetition with some of their storylines and everything. Um, but even still, knowing what was going to happen and how it was going to pan out, I did actually still end up liking that one quite a bit. Um, and it had kind of a similar undertone to soul which was like your purpose and also like it, it was a bit more lovey dovey than soul because like soul was mostly about like your purpose in life whereas elemental was more about like it was kind of a mix of like your purpose in life but also like finding your soulmate type of thing um being true to yourself and that sort of thing um but yeah, I, I liked Elemental more than Soul. Um, what else? What else? I'm trying to think. I don't know. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of things, but I can't, I really can't think of that many movies right now. Um, I guess there's other animated studios I could talk about, like uh, DreamWorks makes, like Kung Fu Panda is pretty good. In all honesty, like, not even being ironic, like, Kung Fu Panda is just a good movie. It's kind of the similar thing where, you, it, you know, the character is finding out who they are, you know, becoming a better version of themselves and everything, you know, personal growth and all that. Self-acceptance, you know. Um, so that's a good movie. Um, I feel like there's another DreamWorks one that's also really good. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, the Lego movie. I don't know who animates that, honestly. I don't think it was Pixar, and I don't think it was DreamWorks either. And I don't think it was Illumination. Those are like the three main ones that I can think of. And I don't think it was any of those. It might have just been like... Columbia Pictures... I think maybe, but I think Illumination is owned by Columbia, so maybe it was Illumination. I don't know. Anyway, the Lego movie is pretty good in terms of like a movie, but it's also mostly just really impressive in terms of its visuals. 
that movie looks really great um, because they put a lot of work into making it not only look like real Legos, but they did a lot to like ensure that the Legos only moved in a way that like Legos can actually move. Like they didn't bend things that like couldn't bend. So it, it looks a lot like a classic like brick film just with a super insane budget, um, which I can really appreciate. Um, so that's really cool. Um, let's see, what else, what else, what else, what else? I'm trying to think of like more serious movies. I don't know, The Godfather comes to mind, but I'm not a huge fan of The Godfather. Um, I mean, it's it's obviously a great movie. People say it's a great movie, and I can agree, but it's just not one of my personal favorites. Um, what else? What else? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I should have written down a list or like, I'm trying to like think of movies that remind me of other movies to like help me think of other movies, but I can't even do that. The pressure's too high right now. I'm putting myself on the spot. Let's see. Um, Oh, okay, I got some. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street and The Big Short. Those are two kind of similar movies in my mind because uh, they both deal with, like, stocks and the economy and money and stuff like that. Um, I like them both quite a lot. I would say of those two, I like The Big Short more. But they have pretty different vibes. The Big Short plays out more like a dramatized Trump dramatized dramatized documentary whereas the wolf of wall street is more just like a i mean i guess it's also kind of a documentary because it does follow the life of jordan belfort who is a real person um i don't know how real a lot of the things depicted in the movie are i'm sure most of them are at least somewhat close to things that happened in reality, but I'm sure some of them are exaggerated to a decent amount. Um, but yeah, they both kind of have different vibes. The first half of Wolf of Wall Street is just like, a, you know, it just makes you feel like you're taking drugs. <laughs> it's just like the huge buildup. I do like the pacing of the Wolf of Wall Street where like the first half of the movie is just like constant build. And then the second half is just like, drop off like his life goes to shit um so i do like both of those movies quite a lot um what about i'm gonna try to think of like actors in the movies they've been in so that i can think of other movies um what has Steve Carell been in? I feel like he's been in a movie that I really like, but I can't think of what it is. <laughs> um, the only thing that's coming to mind is The Office, but that's not a movie. I'm also not a big fan of The Office. Um, I mean, it's, it's a funny show. It has plenty of funny moments, don't get me wrong, but it is hard to watch because it's so cringy at times. I just can't handle it. I'm not, I'm not built for that. Um, I'll be the first to admit, I just, I just can't handle it. <laughs> so I, I don't like watching The Office. I'll watch like, you know, you'll get recommended on YouTube, like funny moments and stuff where it's like out of context and it's just like the jokes. I can watch those and I can laugh at those. But like watching an episode all the way through is just, it's too hard for me. I can't do it. <laughs> um, I can't think of anything else Steve Carell's been in. I don't know. Um, Leonardo DiCaprio has been in like Inception Inception's a good movie 
Um, I don't really have a huge opinion of Inception. I don't love it absolutely. I don't hate it or anything. It's just a good movie. It's like, if someone were to recommend like, hey, let's watch Inception, it's like, I'd be like, okay, sure. I wouldn't be like, yes, we gotta watch that right now, you know? Um, and I wouldn't be like, no, I don't wanna watch that. Um, it's just a pretty, pretty normal movie to me. Um, what about Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks been in a lot of things, like Castaway. Castaway is a pretty good movie. I like Castaway. Um, what else has he been in? Oh, Flight. He's not in Flight, but I was. He he's in another movie that's similar to Flight, and that made me think of Flight. But Flight is a good movie. I like Flight a lot with Denzel Washington. Um, when I watched it. It actually wasn't at all what I was expecting it to be, but it was still really good. I still really like that movie a lot. Um, Denzel Washington is a really great actor. Um, what else? I've never seen any of like the Equalizers because he's in those. Um, I feel like there's other really great movies that Denzel Washington is in that I've seen and that I know that I like, but I can't think of what they are. One that comes to mind is The Book of Eli, which is a good movie, but again, it's kind of like Inception, where it's like I don't have a super strong opinion one way or the other about that movie. Um, yeah. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really struggling here. Hopefully, everyone is asleep by now, so they're not even realizing that I'm struggling to come up with other movies. Um, Gladiator with Russell Crowe. Is pretty good. I like that one a lot. I mean, depictions of the Roman Empire are pretty cool, because uh, the Roman Empire was pretty cool. And it's just it's just a good, it's a pretty feel good story. I would say. I mean, well, in a sense, you know, it's not like the most feel good of all feel good movies or anything like that. But it's got a, you know, it's got a satisfying ending of sorts. Um, The Pirates of the Caribbean, Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't, I never remember how you're supposed to say it. Um, I usually just say Caribbean, but I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> um, I like some of those. I honestly, I don't even know how many of those there are at this point. I think I've only ever seen the first three. I think there's more than that though at this point. Um, but those are good movies. They're pretty fun. Yeah, um, that makes me think of the Lord of the Rings movies because Orlando Bloom is in both of those. And again, it's kind of the same thing where it's like, you know, I, I like the Lord of the Rings movies, but they're, I'm not crazy about them or anything. Um, they're also exceptionally long movies. I remember there was a, we, my family went on a trip to like, meet up with family and some of my other family members like extended family members are really into lord of the rings and they have like the the full lord of the rings like director's edition or whatever it's like all the whole trilogy and it's like each movie is like three and a half hours long <laughs> i remember we watched those all not all like back to back because that would take like literally all day um or maybe we did, honestly. I don't remember, but I remember watching that at least over the course of a few days, and that was like a lot of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> um, they're good movies, but uh, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to come up with other movies. I'm sure there are so many good movies that I'm forgetting about, but... That's all I can come up with right now. But those are some of my favorites. You'll have to let me know in the comments what some of your favorites are. 
um, or if you know any of the ones I listed that you really love. If you really hate them, you just gotta let me know. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching if you've made it this far into the video. And until next time, I'll catch you later.